ready to try to install my first all-in-one cooling unit, which I've never done before. So let's see how this goes. There's no way they would have let me buy a cooler that doesn't fit in this case, is there? Welcome to RIGS, IGN's PC build-off show, where two PC enthusiasts face off to see who can build the better rig. That's the easiest hard drive installation I've ever done. Extremely nervous about the small parts. I'm Akeem, I'm a huge PC guy, and I'll be your host. Now today, our contestants are building the most powerful gaming rigs they can with a cool $2,000. And to keep things interesting, we're requiring them to incorporate a secret component that won't be revealed until the challenge begins. And don't forget, we're gonna be giving away these machines to you, that's right. Follow the link below to learn more and how to enter to win. You guys got all of that? Well then, let's get into it. This is Riggs. Time to meet IGN's tech editor, Bo Moore, who'll be serving as our judge for today's competition. I'm Bo Moore. I'm the executive editor of tech here at IGN. That means I oversee all of the tech and hardware review coverage that you see on IGN.com. We've talked a lot about teraflops, but all that power really isn't worth much. I built my first PC sometime in, I think, middle school. My current one is uh, sitting right behind me. It's got a 2080 Ti in it. I uh, went for the best. Thank you so much, Bo. I'm so glad to have you here. Well, I think it's time for us to meet our contestants. Hello Chung and I am a producer at IGN. I got into PC gaming like six years ago and I thought it was super daunting at first. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized that PC gaming is honestly the more sustainable option. Got him, that's a team. What I'm currently playing right now is Apex and I actually upgraded my GPU for that. So now my computer can handle streaming the game and also playing the game at 60 FPS without any stutter, which is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna walk you guys through this and show you it's not that scary to build a PC from scratch. <laughs> I'm Dan Stapleton. I'm IGN's executive editor of reviews. So I decide who reviews what, and then I tell them they did it wrong and they have to do it again. We are dropping uh, the decimal from our reviews and just going to a flat 10 point scale. I've been building my own PCs since I uh, graduated high school in 1999, so I am uh, old. Welcome contestants. For today's build off, I wanna see competent gaming rigs that can handle current PC games handily. I'll be taking everything into account. Hardware, benchmarks, thermals, future proofing, cable management, your budget allocation, and you know, some nice aesthetics wouldn't hurt either. Your budget is $2,000. Use it wisely. Now with that out of the way, we have one last bit of housekeeping, your mystery component. And they should be arriving at your doors right now. Oh my God. Oh God. Look at this. This is so pretty. Contestants, you may open up your packages. Oh my god, didn't these things just come out? You guys shouldn't have! It's an i7-10700K. Oh my god. Yeah, that is that is uh, hot off the presses. On the Intel side, that's pretty much uh, what, you, what you definitely want in a gaming PC. What you're holding is Intel's 10th generation i7-10700K processor. It's an eight core, 16 thread CPU that clocks in at 3.8 gigahertz base frequency, but can turbo boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. Remember, this part counts towards your overall budget, so be smart. I have faith in both of you. The next time that we speak, I'll be judging your finished builds, so don't disappoint me. And when you're building a PC, just think of it like an overpriced Lego set. And of course, don't forget to ground yourself. Those are my first and last tips. Good luck. Okay. Dan, coming for you. Hope you're ready. 
Enough build up to the building, let's build the build. All right, folks, well, we have our budget of $2,000 and our mystery component, an Intel i7-10700K processor. And with that, we're off to the races. Well, the first thing you've got to uh, do on any PC is start with the motherboard. This one is an Asus Tough gaming motherboard. I don't know how tough it is, but we'll find out. I chose the Z490 Aorus motherboard because it's supposed to support the 10th gen Intel Core processors. First thing I'm gonna do is Add in that CPU. Okay, so I'm taking out the um, Core i7, which is gonna be going right here on the motherboard. A little tiny chip, but very powerful. Just drop it right in there. I always get extremely nervous about the small parts. Latch it in. Okay, so that's attached. There you go. CPU is done, basically. <laughs> so for the cooler, I chose the Noctua CPU cooler, which is just kind of a fan system instead of water cooling, but you don't always necessarily need water cooling as long as you have good air circulation in your PC. So that's why we chose this to kind of keep our price point a little bit under um, and keep it more reasonable for you guys. Next, we have our NVMe uh, SSD drive, which these things are unbelievably tiny. Like compared to, you know, just a few years ago, we were having those giant bulky hard drives. And these, these NVMe drives are just itsy bitsy. In you go, little hard drive. And there we go, that's our, that's our hard drive. In a lot of ways, that's the easiest hard drive installation I've ever done. So I'm gonna start installing our two sticks of 16 gigabyte RAM. I chose 32 gigabytes of the Corsair Vengeance LPX, which is two 16 gigabyte sticks, and they're both running DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. These are two 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200 DIMMs. Depending on the motherboard that you have, it will specify what lanes that it prefers. So just make sure you're putting in correctly. Just slot in. This is perhaps the most Lego-like of any component. There it is. Satisfying click. There you go. Ta da! And we'll be all set. All right, so now that we've got the CPU, the RAM, and the hard drive in here, we've done just about as much as we can do before we put it in the case. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We've got our uh, H510 Elite case from NZXT. You know, I don't, I don't need a massive tower to, to throw a bunch of big hard drives and optical drives in there. It's like you don't, don't really need that anymore. And we are screwed in. Here's the part that I'm most excited about, the RTX 2080 Super. I chose this because it's a step below the best um, RTX card right now, which is the 2080 Ti. And this is much cheaper and it will do everything that you need. There we go. So you won't need a separate PC for streaming. It'll handle streaming and gaming at the same time, and it'll do that no problem. Uh, we've got our RTX uh, 2070 Super, about the third best graphics card you can get right now. It's about $400, so it reasonably fits into a build like this. Let's throw her in there. Okay. All right, the graphics card is installed. storage, I chose the 970 EVIL Plus SSD card, which is an M2 NVMe, and I chose this because if you put your OS on this, your computer boots up super quickly, which is fantastic for someone who has very little patience like me, so that's great. There we go. I'm ready to try to install my first all-in-one cooling unit, which I've never done before, so let's see how this goes. If we are going to overclock, this thing should keep the, uh, the, the CPU nice and cool and looks nice.
no way they would have let me buy a cooler that doesn't fit in this case, is there? Um, uh, so as you can see, this cooler does not fit. We got the wrong size cooler. So for now, it's just going to um, just kind of sit there and we will be very careful moving it. <laughs> this is not an ideal situation, but the uh, competition waits for no man to return a, a, the wrong part and get a new one. So. Supply. I got the EVGA 750 watt, which is kind of <laughs> the thing that keeps your computer running. This is a 750 watt thermal take, tough power, gold rated power supply. Lots of room for uh, if you want to add in uh, more hard drives or you know another graphics card or beefier graphics card at some point down the line. You'll have you'll have the the capacity to do it without having to swap out your power supply, which is a pain. Okay, so this is going to go underneath here and we'll be all set. And all of the wires are towards the back, which is great because then you have all the wires back here and organized and kind of hidden away from the site, especially since we have a glass case. So, you know, that kind of works out. And naturally nothing works without an operating system, so we went with Windows 10 Home Edition for another $108. All right, and that's that. It was a little tough at first, but it's honestly like riding a bike. Well, that, uh, that was a little bit rough. Uh, finding out that I had the wrong size uh, radiator was not great. In theory, this could still work, but it's not pretty. I haven't had to upgrade my PC in so long, so this was kind of nice to build another one from scratch. Now it's time to ship my bouncing baby PC off to Benchmark School, where uh, it will be put up against Stella's. I hope this can stand against Stan's PC. But we'll see. Godspeed, little fella. Have you heard about Intel Gamer Days? Intel partnered up with over 40 top names in PC gaming to bring gamers like you huge deals and incredible giveaways. Now get a sneak peek at gamerdays.intel.com. And one more thing, guys. IGN is joining the party. All the Intel-powered PCs featured in this show are being given away to our viewers. So are you feeling lucky? Then follow the link below to enter and learn more. All right, guys, so as you can see, Bo is hard at work trying to make a decision who made the better rig. Bo, technically I am your boss. I just want you to keep that in mind. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really rooting for the both of you, but only one of you can actually win, so. So I've been going through everything. I've tabulated your component choice, your use of the budget, how well the aesthetics came through, you know, that little bit of personality, and of course, check the benchmarks. So let's go line by line. For component choice, it's important to note that both of you had the Intel i7-10700K processor. It has eight cores, 16 threads, and a turbo boost frequency of up to 5.1 gigahertz, which means the rest of your hardware can operate with minimal bottlenecking. And speaking of hardware, let's talk about your graphics cards. I think that Stella kind of has the edge of this one. She, she went with a, an RTX 2080 Super for the graphics card, whereas Dan only chose the 2070 Super. And so that I think might give her a little bit of an edge in the benchmarks later on. But we'll get to that in a second. For the use of the budget though, uh, Dan takes the crown in this category because he not only was a few hundred dollars under budget of where Stella came in, he also factored in the cost of Windows, which is something that Stella didn't factor into the cost of her build. So now let's talk about the aesthetics of the cases here. So you know, RGB lighting can really do a lot for you when you're working with a tempered glass case, and frankly, I would have liked to see more. We've got a little bit here and there, but I think that Dan takes the edge in the aesthetics category. This case has a bit more lighting going on, and also, Stella, I gotta dock you a few points because on your front radiator, there's space for two fans, but you only have one, so it kinda looks a little bit sloppy. Damn! He Got you. Harsh, but okay. Roasted. <laughs> Having said that, you you went a little different direction for your CPU coolers. Dan, you went with an all-in-one cooler. I'm usually a fan of that. Although Stella, excellent choice of a Noctua cooler. If you're gonna go with an air cooler, Noctua has some of the best that you can get. So you're really not too fall, falling far behind on that at all. But now, let's talk about the benchmarks. 
It was pretty close. Y'all picked very similar components down the line, but as I said, Stella, you picked the RTX 2080 Super, which is a little bit more powerful than the 2070 Super. So I ran some tests. Here are my results. 3D Mark Time Spy, a test that measures gaming performance using DirectX 12, run at 1440p, Stella's build won with a score of 10,634 over Dan's 9,887. In 3D Mark Port Royal, a benchmark that measures ray tracing performance, Stella's machine came out on top with a score of 6,887 over Dan's 6,012. In Unigen Heaven Benchmark 4.0, which we tested at 1440p resolution, Stella's machine came out on top with an FPS score of 89.6 and an overall benchmark score of 2,258, beating out Dan's 82.1 FPS and his score of 2,068. In PC Mark 10, Stella's machine won with a benchmark score of 7,149 over Dan's very close score of 7,101. To test thermal performance, we did a three minute stress test using Prime 95. During that time, Stella's machine mostly hovered around 65 degrees Celsius with a peak of 69 degrees. Dan's machine was a little bit cooler, mostly hovering around 59 degrees Celsius with a peak of 65. No surprise there, Dan's all-in-one liquid cooler outperformed Stella's air cooler by just a little bit. For our Adobe Premiere Pro render test, we took a five minute video file from our timeline intermixed with half 5K Red Code RAW footage and half H.264 footage and exported it to both 4K ProRes and 4K H.264. Stella's build exported the intermixed five minutes of footage in three minutes and 52 seconds to ProRes and two minutes and 39 seconds to H.264. Dan's build also exported the ProRes in 3 minutes and 52 seconds, but it took a bit longer for H.264, coming in at 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, but now for the benchmarks that we really care about, the gaming tests. So for these benchmarks, we ran all of our tests at 1440p resolution using the highest available graphics preset. In Assassin's Creed Origin, Stella barely lost out with a score of 58 FPS to Dan's 60, but that was the only one that she lost. In Metro Exodus, her 36 FPS beat out Dan's 33 FPS, and that's an incredibly demanding game. And in Total War Three Kingdoms, Stella had a score of 58 FPS, beating out Dan's 52. In short, Stella's choice for a 2080 Super really paid off here because that just slightly more powerful graphics card really eked out those couple of extra frames over Dan's 2070 Super. Both of these rigs are really fantastic and would play games at 1080p or 1440p handily. So with all that said, one of the builders had the edge. So the winner is... Stella. That's fine, right? Stella, how do you feel? Um, honestly, I kind of had a few doubts because it's been a minute since I built a PC, but I don't know, I feel really good. All right, Dan, I, I know I know you're in the losing corner on this one. Do you have anything that you want to say to uh, the winner, Stella, though? I don't watch enough WWE for this. <laughs> <laughs> really good work, Stella. The, the better PC you won, uh, but uh, I think uh, next time I'll give you more of a run for your money. Ooh. Well, there you have it, folks. It was close, but it all came down to the graphics card where Stella's rig outperformed and clinched the win. What a show. Whew, that confetti was dope. But you know what, guys? It's not over just yet. You can still win one of these machines. Just follow the link below to learn more and enter to win. And Stella and Dan will be returning next week, so tune in for a new build, a new budget, and an all-new mystery component. Plus, another chance to enter and win a freshly built PC. Now, which PC would you all have chosen? Leave a comment down below, and if you have any future ideas for builds, let us know. We need to know. Thank you so much to Intel Gamer Days for making this all possible. And thanks for watching, and for all things PC gaming, keep it locked right here on IGN.